Hi, everyone. Uh, greetings and welcome to Building Your Business with Creative Storytelling and Messaging. This program uh, is brought to you by the Beverly Hills Bar Association Law Practice Management and Technology Section. Before I introduce my speakers, I just would like to point out uh, one of the Bar Association's newer services, which is our virtual office program. Uh, that's for those of you who may not want a full-time office, but may still want certain office services, such as conference rooms, uh, daily mail scan, and other items. If you want to know more about that, you can contact the Bar Association. You can also uh, find the bar, check out the virtual office online there at the URL at the bottom of the screen. Now, it is my pleasure to introduce our speakers. First, I have Holly Boyer, Partner and Chief Executive Officer of Media and Marketing Minds, or M3 for short. Holly is an innovative marketing executive with proven success driving revenue, brand awareness, and company performance. Her work spans strategic planning, marketing, and communication initiatives, major product launches, and cross-functional projects. She has led domestic and global teams in media and cross-functional projects, oh, excuse me, in media and e-commerce businesses at Condé Nast, Tribune Media, and Yahoo. Holly thinks strategically, acts creatively, and loves seeing ideas come to life. Julie Newmark is also partner and chief operating officer. Julie's career began in music, began in music. I'd love to hear more about that as a touring singer songwriter and evolved into marketing where she held leadership roles at startups and fortune 500 companies in the ad tech and media space. Most recently, she was the owner of new marketing group, a boutique digital marketing agency, still a songwriter at heart. Julie channels her creativity for helping brands connect with their audiences through storytelling, which on occasion requires a song. I can assure you that she is quite the wordsmith. Uh, and, and then we have last but not least, Carrie Fiesel, Concurrent Productions, Current Productions creates brand videos that warm your leads by establishing trust without a handshake, you need authentic video. Uh, Carrie lets us know that their brand vi uh, video production process creates emotionally engaging authentic video content that reveals the humanity and personality behind your organization. Video has a unique power to convey authentic emotion. It's too powerful to lead to just rote information. And that's why they create brand videos. Okay, I want, before I um, turn this over, I actually, I guess last but not least is me. Um, I'm LeVar Lawson <laughs> uh, with the Beverly Hills Bar Association. Um, I'm a tax attorney, but when I'm not doing that, I love to talk to people, interview people. So here we are. So I guess I'd like to turn it over to us because I guess my initial question or a couple of things is, yikes, does this mean that I have a brand? And how do I know my brand? And then you know, how does storytelling come into play when I'm trying to tell people about my business? So anyway, just help me if you can. <laughs> well, I can start with that. I mean, just even what you said, Levon, I love to ask people questions. That is something that, ooh, okay, let's start there. You're curious. And how does that relate to how you draw that out for your clients? So that's something, just even that little thing, knowing that about you, gives me something to kind of pull on to to the thread of your brand. Okay. Oh, interesting. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. I would so add just to that, that everybody has a story. And one of the things that when we're talking to clients, we ask a lot about your background. Like you heard about Julie being a story, a singer and songwriter, and that makes her have an amazing story behind her, but everybody has a story. And when we talk to clients, people deal with people and they want to know your story. And so when we put that story together and start to pull together messaging for a business, we rely a lot on that background and that story to bring that to life. And, and the other thing that I'll add to that is, um, Levon, you, you, you said, you actually expressed this as we've heard many other uh, either sole proprietor businesses or small businesses say, yikes, do I have a brand? Um, and, and brand can be a big, scary word, but it doesn't have to be. I think if you are in business, whether you're one person or, you know, a hundred uh, people, you have a brand. And, and like Holly and Carrie were saying, you, you have a story. Wow. How do I hone in on what my brand is? And is this something that I change or something that I define or is this something that's already out there? Everyone knows it about me. How do I find out what it is? Am I making sense? 
Yeah, absolutely. I was going to say, Holly, do you want to talk about the thinking cap? Yeah. So we, we have a, a phrase that puts your thinking cap on. And the thinking cap is your competitors, your audience, and your pillars. So when you think about, okay, who are my competitors? We look, we do an analysis of what are they doing? What are they doing well? Maybe what should I be doing a little bit better to keep up with the competition? Or what are my strengths up against that competition? So really taking a look at your competition and understanding where you fit into that competitive landscape is one piece. Okay. The second piece is your audience. And you know, with, from a marketing perspective, we always talk about who's your target market? Who do you really want to reach? And have a clear understanding of who that is. Um, that's the last piece is we call it pillars, or it's also your reasons to believe. And, you know, we, we've worked with Carrie before where we say, okay, your reasons to believe your pillars, what are those three to five things that you're going to talk about? So even when you're thinking about doing a video, what are those three to five pillars that you're going to always come back to? How do you use that in communication? How do you use that on your website? But coming up with those clear pillars gives you a great foundation to start with. And when we worked with Carrie, you say, here they are, and she will start to ask you questions around, you know, those pillars. Yeah, I love that, the, that Holly and Julie work very well in, in kind of bringing you outside in. And then where I work from is the yikes, do I have a brand, is really drawing out what's natural to you, what feels effortless and getting that conversation going where it might feel like, oh, I didn't even know that that was a thing about me that is important, or I, I didn't even notice that about me. So really having sort of a reflection of where Holly and Julie come in to really understand where you fit in the marketplace and then working from the inside out as well. Okay, very interesting. So kind of initially, so when you're working with someone it sounds like first you're kind of helping them. You said you put, you know, put that kind of thinking cap on to figure out kind of where they are, you know, who they are, what are the, what are the messages that should be consistent everywhere? I mean, is that how you get started or how do you get started? Yeah. I mean, it really is a lot of exploration um, at the beginning. And, and I would say those, those three uh, things that make up the acronym CAP really do ultimately inform that, that answer that question. What is my brand? It, it, it requires that you have a, a good awareness of the audience that you're trying to reach and of your competitors, but then also what is unique about what you're offering in your service? Um, because Yes, there's a lot of attorneys out there, but I, I guarantee there are ways that you uh, can differentiate yourself and probably already are. Very interesting. And do you, and so, and that's something that you would help me or another attorney do? Yeah. In fact, in, in the um, workshop that, um, that we give, and, and, and even when we work with clients, um, we have exercises that you can walk through that make it um, actually kind of fun and interesting and, and a lot less overwhelming to figure those things out. Oh, wow. that's very interesting. So this is kind of the, this kind of the strategy and then there's kind of the implementation piece. Do you do both or how does this work? And I know I'm kind of jumping around. So, you know, I, you can kind of guide me to what you want me to just, you know, to make sure that I cover it because I think this is a very important topic for someone like me or someone else who wants to figure out their marketing strategy and kind of, you know, now's the time when I should be working on my marketing. I'm not the only one, but um, so, you know, what happens? I reach out to you and I say help. And so kind of what's, what, what are the, you know, what would happen for instance? Like uh, we, we kind of brainstorm or, you know, what do we do? Yeah, we have a motto. It's um, tell it, plan it, and sell it. So okay. when we execute on that motto, the first part is really that messaging we were talking about. What is your message? What's your story? The plan it part really is that strategy you're talking about. How are we going to take that message, take it to market, and put a strategy, a plan, some marketing tactics around that. And then the sell it part is all about taking it to market, so the implementation. So to answer your question, yes, we do both. We do that strategy development and the implementation around that. Um, and a lot of those tactics could include um, you know, events, social media, 
uh, communications, video development. So there's a number of things that are all very customized to what the business actually needs to help it grow based on what their objectives are. Is your objective to grow revenue, acquire new contacts, um, new customers? Is it to communicate with your current customers? Each business has its own objectives and we really modify and customize that plan to meet those objectives. Now, yeah, one similar, more. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I want to forget. Similar for us, we really have, we all have a really deep discovery process of what do you really need? And like Holly was saying, it's very customized for her. It is for us as well. And it might be that you come to us and say, I need a video. And we ask, well, what for? And, you know, go through that process. And we might figure out really what you need right now is not a video yet, but you need to talk to Holly and Julie first and they have some other strategies. So it's a matter of figuring out what do you really need to grow your business to get to where you wanna go? And video is a tool to get you there. And if you know and we can help you figure out how you're going to use that tool and how it fits well into your strategy, that's where we start from. Very good. Well, before I get to the, my question about the creative storytelling process, uh, one of our um, uh, uh, attendees has asked uh, the meaning of the uh, acronym CAP. Oh, so. I actually just typed in an answer to that. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So it should be in the Q&A, but, but we can just repeat. Um, it's competitors, audience, and pillars. And again, pillars are those three to five uh, unique values that, that you bring uh, as to your service. Perfect. Perfect. So let's, you know, we, we, you, we talk and kind of we figure out, you know, what uh, I guess my brand is and what my, my hopes are or what, or what I want to achieve. And we start talking about a strategy, but what is the creative storytelling? Like what is, you know, what's the role of creative storytelling in this process? Yeah, I, I'll uh, throw something in that I don't think we've talked about yet is um, that's really, really helpful to Holly and I when we're working with someone to figure out their story is talking to their clients. Um, there is sometimes no better way to understand how to talk about yourself than listening to how your clients talk about you. Um, I, you know, I think it's a pretty common thing. I've talked to people who are even, you know, have a marketing background that maybe moved to another career that say, gosh, I can really, I can, I can market other things, but I have a really hard time marketing myself. And that's a really common thing. So sometimes hearing back what your client's experience has been um, is really helpful in creating that story. I would totally agree with that and add to it as well that when you are talking on camera with me interviewing you and our editor finding those pieces of, oh, that's the story thread, that's the thing. There's a theme there. Having that experience of where you just feel like maybe you're talking for an hour or an hour and a half even and just coming out and having someone else edit that and reflect back to you, these are the things that really stand out and these are the threads I saw. So having that sort of editorial experience from a mirror of someone else. Got it. And I would say what, one more thing about that. You know, we've talked a lot about pillars and there are some times where we will talk to a client and then we are, yeah, talk to a business and then we go talk to the clients and all of a sudden those pillars become so clear. And many times we use some words that the client has used because that's how people are describing you, how they're talking about you. Um, we recently worked with a boutique personal injury law firm. And one of the things that came out, we talked to five clients and one of the big, biggest things that came out was they are great communicators and they are so personable and approachable. And those two things became some of our pillars that we actually worked with. So hearing from the clients, I, I think that, um, you know, Julie's right. So that just becomes such a great foundation. And what you want to hear and how you want to portray yourself is how people see you. And it's really fun. Holly and I always remark that the overlap that happens, um, which really is what helps you lead to those three, you know, honing it into those three to five pillars, because, you know, people are oftentimes using some of the same words to describe their experience of you. It's interesting. I, I imagine sometimes talking about oneself and a third, like looking at it as, as, you know, creating a story and talking about someone else, it makes it maybe easier in a way. If I'm thinking about it, oh, I'm not just talking about myself and beating my own chest, but actually I'm, this is a story about, you know, I've heard this information and treat it as if I'm talking about someone else. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and so do people remember a story? Like, are you crafting something? Is it kind of a story also because it's just easier for, you know, kind of it really affects the person in the audience more? Like somehow if I know who that person is, because now I've seen this and I, I have a story now about them. Yeah, story really gives you something to hang on to. It's, and really being specific is, um, you know, a principle of storytelling. Like I would, I, one of some of the questions I ask my clients have to do is like, tell me about a moment where you really changed something for your client. Like think about that specific moment. How did you feel? What was happening for that client before? What happened after? The story of transformation is really always what you want to go for and really understand how did your services change somebody. Okay. Or your background and experience. So I'll give you one other example. We have been working with a chiropractor and he's been in business for a long time and he wanted to just really refresh his brand, refresh his, um, his website, his messaging. And as we were talking to him, one thing that I found out is that he was an all-American gymnast in his day and was actually on an Olympic you know, um, trajectory, but had a horrible injury as a, as a gymnast. And he went to a chiropractor who really helped him build back his, his strength and his muscle. And that story, and he had these amazing, great pictures from, from his day. And just hearing that story gives him some credibility. It gave him like why he decided to choose the profession that he's in. And so based on your, like the transformation that Carrie talks about, your experience, your background, all of those start to pull together to really tell that story and give you some meat to your, to your story overall. Got it. Well, can you, can you tell me a little bit about your stories? So, or tell the audience rather a little bit about your stories. So um, how did you get here from where you are? Whoever wants to go first. Yeah, I'll, I'll start. Um, I, wow, I, um, I got here in, probably never 20 years ago would have said this is what I would be doing. Um, I moved to LA to be an actress and a singer and um, did that for a while and uh, to, got to tour the, the world, opening for some, some bigger artists um, with my band. And, um, you know, I, I did actually graduate from college with a marketing degree um, that my parents sort of thought, Hmm, when is she going to use that? But uh, I did, I did put it to use um, as an independent artist, having to kind of navigate uh, as the digital world was emerging, um, you know, figuring out social media and how to get my my own name out there. And so when when that that all kind of wrapped up, it seemed like the logical next step to uh, go into marketing because. It also marketing is something that can that is so creative that is you know rooted in in uh, in communicating uh, your story and and um, to the right audience that you know um, you want to reach and, and using the right words so it seemed like a natural fit for me to go into and uh, yes then the the short of the long is here I am um, I I <laughs> I had a brief brief and um, uh, fast uh, climb in the uh, startup and corporate world to kind of cut my teeth and, and ended up landing back being a, an entrepreneur um, and partnering with Holly in, in M3. Wonderful. Wonderful. So I'll, just, uh, I'll go. Yeah, just following that. So my background is completely different from Julie's. Um, very much, in, as you've heard in the introduction, very much a corporate background. I started out in magazines, mostly in like media and technology. So I started out uh, at magazines that are now part of Condé Nast. I was at JD Power and Associates. I worked at the LA Times and ran their marketing team and then was also at Yahoo for a number of years, getting a bit more digital experience. Um, Julie and I met at the Yellow Pages, which was the YP.com, which is the digital arm of the Yellow Pages, trying to really get businesses to move from being in print to more on the digital side. But I would say, as you all probably have heard and seen in corporate America, there's lots of layoffs, reorgs, acquisitions, mergers, and the last straw was at YP, where they were acquired a year and a half after uh, I started there and that's when I thought I'm not doing this anymore 
<laughs> I'm going to go and take all that experience and things that I've learned and uh, start my own agency. So it's been great over the last you know, almost two years with Julie doing our, our own thing and really taking that experience and working with clients from, you know, all different sizes and kinds of businesses. And what sorts of clients do you have? We have a broad array of clients. So we, we initially started with more SMB or the small business side, but we have um, kind of branched out and we've got on that small business side, we have lawyers, we have um, nutritionists, we work with nonprofits. I told you about the chiropractor. So just sort of a very interesting group, but we also have some fairly large clients. We've worked with a manufacturer of lights and right now we also have a, our client is Hulu. So really a, a broad array of, of clients that we work with. And um, I imagine that the services can, there's a broad array of services as well, like anything from being the in-house marketing team to being a consultant. Uh, yeah, uh, we, you're, you are correct. It goes across the board. And uh, Holly and I like to say that M3 is the in your in-house marketing team without the HR hassle. So <laughs> we, we really enjoy um, working, you know, very hands-on. We're not the type of uh, an agency that you meet us, you, you decide to work with us and we hand you off to somebody junior. We really enjoy working with our clients um, and that, that's across the board from the large ones to the, the small businesses. Now, before I get to um, process and then tips, um, along with some, you know, if there's any kind of success stories that you want to share as well, um, I want to, of course, uh, bring Carrie into this. And Carrie, um, I have uh, seen some, had the opportunity to check out some of your work, and it's your videos are really engaging and and just and very nice. And so um, I was interested in how you all connected and kind of what you bring to the whole thing. Yeah, thank you for your compliments. Um, I connected with Holly through uh, a networking event in Pasadena a few years ago and then reconnected um, with the M3 team almost a year ago, maybe. Um, so really had kind of had them in my mind as, oh, Holly's someone who helped me out. She sent me some research, someone I want to reach out to again. Um, and that sort of, that's relationship driven. Like that's really, I think, where I, I love to share that. Um, and that's where I, the threads of my life have sort of pulled me along really through relationships, kind of finding people that this is the person who I want to connect with. That's a relationship I want to have. And that's really how our videos work as well, where you are yourself, you're presenting who you are, and the goal is really to attract people who want to work with you, who like you and want to be engaged by you and have a relationship with you. So I try to draw that out in the videos. Um, and that's, that's my story as well. I've been, um, just curious about people. I think that's kind of where my story begins, where I studied global studies, cultural anthropology, and just the chance to get into someone's story and ask questions about that has really sparked that in my life and been the thread that pulled me through. Now, I hope you'll forgive me for what will seem possibly as somewhat of a backward question, but does video help? I'm sorry to ask, but uh, I want to know more about it. So, you know, if you have the, you know, what can video do for my marketing or my website or? or yeah, marketing? no, it's not a backward. It's a great question. Yeah, I mean, I think video helps in terms of, especially now, where really to me the highest use of video is to establish trust, where you can really get a sense of what is it like to work with that person. I can't meet them in person now. I can't shake their hand. You know, how do I, how do I really get a sense of their vibe and just, yeah, what they're like, their personality. Will I be someone who fits with them? Are we a match to work together? So in that sense, I mean, there's certainly other ways you can use videos. You can automate education. You could, you know, there's certainly lots of different ways you can use it, but to me, the highest opportunity is to establish trust. And I think one of the things that, um, that, that's really valuable that, that you offer, Carrie, is you know, not just that brand story video, but also testimonials from 
clients. Um, and again, I think that definitely falls under trust. I think for, for Holly and I, it's, it's one of the things that makes you such a great partner is through almost every aspect of marketing, once we get to implementing um, websites, social media, um, you know, video is so important. It's the way that people are consuming their content these days. So how, before I ask how we come to, how would we then work with you? How, who brings in whom? So I have a better understanding of, of kind of how this works. Does Carrie contact you? Do you contact Carrie? How do M3 and Concurrent Productions work together? That's been kind of a, a bit of a mixed bag, actually. Um, so just one example, uh, Carrie and her husband, Jeff, ran into, started talking to a gentleman about doing a video for their business. And what they realized is that, you know, maybe he needed to really figure out those pillars, that bottom line messaging and, and what that may be. So they called us and said, hey, if you could work with him to do the messaging and really shore that up, then we can take that and help him pull together some brand videos. So it could work that way. On the other hand, where we have that personal injury attorney that I told you about, um, we've been doing a lot of things with them in terms of their messaging, their logo development, their website. Now moving into social media, our next step with them is let's get, some, get a video together. You know, put, take all of these things that you've been talking about and put a video on your site. We would then call concurrent and say, can you help us execute on this kind of a video? So I think it goes really back and forth in terms of where a client might be or a business would be in their, in their overall stage of marketing. Yeah, it also could be that someone need, knows they need an educational video or something, you know, kind of starting off with something very specific for a purpose of video they need. And then we start to develop the relationship with them and discover that they really actually need Holly and Julie's services as well for a larger strategy. Very good. So I'm going to ask you about uh, tips. So, um, you know, I think we kind of, we, we started off talking about brand and I guess I have a brand. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what that is. I better check it out. So in other words, kind of what's a tip, uh, I guess, initially for assessing yourself and your brand and where you are in the marketplace? What would you say? Yeah, I mean, I think first it's, it starts with commitment. My motto is show up, be yourself. And by showing up, I really mean commitment. Like, are you committed to growing your business? Do you really want to do marketing? Are you happy with where you are? Or do you really want to change? I think that really would be the first step just in your mindset. Okay. Yeah, and I would say um, discovery is definitely the first step. I mean, it's, it's what we start, Holly and I start every single project, no matter what the project is, you have to have that discovery period um, in, in understanding, you know, pretty much the, the, the cap that we talked about before. You really need to understand the space that, that your client is, is playing in, their competitors, their audience, what do they bring to the table? Um, but then I would say my biggest piece of advice, my biggest tip is I want to acknowledge first that marketing can feel so overwhelming. Um, we talked to a lot of prospective clients that are just like, I don't know how, I don't know where to start. And it's so common. There's, you're not meant to be a marketer, yet there seems to be this expectation that you're supposed to just do it. Um, so I think my biggest tip is incremental. You don't have to do everything at once. You need to figure out what is, what's gonna move the needle for you the most to begin with. Maybe it's a website. Maybe it's not a website. Maybe it's just focusing on one social media channel. But incremental is going to take away that overwhelm and it's going to start to show you results right away. Very I would probably add as the tip that I would have is communication is key. So, and it doesn't have to be perfect. That, but communicating, putting a communication plan together, whether it's building that email list and sending out some updates to your current or even prospective clients um, is a good thing to do. Communication, letting people know who you are, what you're doing, what some of your new services are, some new stories you have, some testimonials you might have gotten. 
everybody has content. And I think to, to Julie's point, sometimes people think, oh, that's scary. I don't have anything to say. Mm -hmm. If you step back and really think about it, you have a lot to say. You're doing a lot in your business. You've got people talking about you. You might have a new service you offer. Just communicate, communicate. Because people will keep you top of mind that way. Okay, That's I such like a good that. point. I want to add too, an offering, um, just in, on the point of feeling overwhelmed, I am happy to offer anyone on this call a 15 minute pro bono consult, just to kind of help you untangle. I have a really easy, short, fun exercise to get you talking and kind of discovering your story. So I'm happy to, if anyone wants to reach out, find me on LinkedIn or email, um, just to kind of start untangling that and, and releasing the overwhelm feeling that you might feel. It, it is overwhelming and, um, and, and thank you. That's, that is greatly appreciated. And, and I'm hearing that kind of, there's this kind of brainstorming that goes on, but also you're saying, you know, you don't have to take it all, all at once. Uh, you can kind of take a step by step and make sure to communicate and keep it up is what I'm hearing. So I guess I, I'm also kind of wondering like, who's going to make me keep it up? <laughs> You know, like, I'm fortunate enough that I have an in-house marketing team and I get to say, happy and go my merry way. But uh, if, 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 if I'm my in-house marketing team, how do I, you know, how do I keep taking those steps, keep communicating, uh, you know, and, and so forth. So, uh, you know, to, I, guess, I guess as I'm hearing the relationships or what you can do can be everything from doing everything to maybe kind of just or even being kind of a, a coach to make sure that these things happen or yeah. I, I'm sorry to come from the sole practitioner perspective. I no, want to be it's, more I think it's a very natural question to ask because I mean, like we were saying before, we work with a range of sizes of businesses with a range of budgets and we get it. You know, sometimes we will work with a, a, a client from creating that messaging and strategy all the way through implementing. But sometimes depending on the budget, we can just serve more in a kind of a consultant capacity. We have another client who's a nutritionist that he, he's actually very proficient in, in, in implementing, but talking with us and sort of having us help him set the strategy. We, one of the first things we did was help him create a social media strategy and calendar. And then he went and executed it, but he had that thing to come back to that he could rely on. So it didn't feel so, I don't know what to post today. Um, so that's, that's kind of another approach that, that we offer as well. That's wonderful. And, and in fact, one of our attendees has asked, um, how often should we communicate and when does it, when, you know, is there ever a time when we cross the line or do too much? I think we've all seen people who have done too much. I think it really depends, uh, depends, right? It's going to be one of those little bit of a kludgy answer of it kind of depends. So I'll, I'll give you another example. I had, Julie will probably start to smirk on the side, but there was um, an influencer that used to be a photographer and moved into social media. And I really was following her. I, I was interested in her, her journey and her transition. And she had a lot of great tips in social media that we were applying to our business. But I have to say, I got weary of her, her emails. Her emails were just filling my inbox and listen to my podcast. And she was just throwing things at me and I backed off. I just thought, I'm, I don't, I don't want to hear from you this much. So there's another person that I, I love who's an influencer in the small business market. And it's probably once a week, he sends an email with a little bit of a tip. It's very short. It's very quick. It's um, useful to me. It's relevant to me. And so his cadence works for me. But we also tell clients that, you know what, you could send a newsletter every other month. You could write a blog once a month and still just put that information out there. So I think it's really what make, what's comfortable to you, what feels right to you. Um, what do you feel like you can actually do? But the, the bottom line of that is do something, do something, but you don't have, to, not everybody fits into the same box of what that frequency looks like. Yeah, totally agree. And, and the, the thing that I'd like to go back to is the incremental approach. Um, one of the things that you can do is you can start small. So what does one post a week look like? What does a newsletter once a month look like? And the, the, the way you find that out is you, you look at 
how it's doing, you, you measure it. So that is something that, you know, as, as much as creativity is a part of marketing, measurement, measurement, measurement. You can't adjust and learn how you succeed until you look at what's working, what's not working. So I would say on the, on the, on the most basic level, start small and look at how that's doing and then add a little and see how that's doing. Yeah, these are all great points. I want to emphasize something Holly said as well, where she honed in on the person she really enjoys hearing from because it's useful to her, it's relevant. So if you're adding value in every communication, then people are going to want to keep paying attention and be engaged with that. Also, can I tell this story, Lavon, sorry, that, that I told you when we were talking the other day about Carrie, because so she's probably not going to tell this story, but I think it's really relevant. Um, so Carrie and I did meet at a networking event and she, you know, we, we had a couple little interactions on, on some information. And then a couple years later, she had added me to her email list and she actually started to do this email campaign and sent an email to me with information about a new product that she was offering in terms of her video service. And it was a well-crafted email um, definitely sent to a, a right target market. It was relevant. It was useful. And I remember reading that thinking, well, that's clever. That's creative. I remember her. And I sent the email to Julie and we have like since had a number of interactions with concurrent. So the, the story, the motto of that story, the bottom line is that it could be years later, but keep up those contacts, keep up that networking, don't be afraid to communicate. And it could be incremental, just all the things that we've been talking about, because that pays off eventually. It may not pay off right away. And next week you may not get a phone call, you might not have something that happens instantly, but building that and keeping that going is, is really important. That's really, I, I appreciate this, this advice. And, and what I'm hearing is kind of, we have to be true to ourselves, but that it's important that we do something, that we follow up, and um, that we're consistent, whatever that consistency looks like for us, is kind of what I'm hearing. And that's like, that's a really wonderful success story. And there's a question that kind of, from our audience, that kind of goes into a question that I have, in other words, how, you know, this was a perfect example of a success story, but, but otherwise, how do you measure success and know whether or not people are in fact, you know, receiving, reading your communications and so forth? Yeah, yeah no, that's a great question. Um, I, I would say that if you're sending out email communications, you're going to want to invest in one of the uh, marketing uh, email marketing platforms. So MailChimp is an example of one. We use that with a lot of our clients. Constant Contact is another. There are a slew of others. Um, but when you when you send out an email through a platform like that, they have built-in analytics that are great. Um, they'll show you the open rate. They'll show you the click-through rate. If you have you know, something to click to, if you're sending them to your site in the email, they'll be able to show that. Um, they can show how many people unsubscribed, how many emails bounced, meaning uh, are your email addresses even up to date and accurate? Some may not be anymore, but they, they give you a lot of great information. And um, I, I can imagine the next question is, uh, how do I know what a good open rate is? Um, if you Google um, in your industry, so uh, what's the average open rate for um, you know, attorneys in a certain you know, area of practice, um, you're gonna be able to find that information I don't have a site to give you right offhand, but I, I know that it, it, the benchmarks are out there. So you can start to measure how am I doing versus the rest of the industry. Very good. And, and I, guess if, I guess we just kind of, what we, we don't know how and when that turns into business, but we know that we can, this increases our profile, gets us out there, connects with more people and just increases the likelihood, I assume that enhances our practice is that yeah I, i'm sorry i feel like i'm taking over <laughs> no go oh, please go ahead um, no i was just gonna say i mean one of the things that holly and i always say about whether it's email or social media is you want to you want to kind of follow that 80 20 rule you want to 80 percent should be give and 20 percent is ask so you don't want to be sending emails all the time that are you know um 
call for a consult today. Um, you want to be giving them information, like read this article that, that's going to help educate you on this, that, or the other thing. Um, you you want to be giving. So the idea is that you create this, this loyalty with your, your followers and um, they, they start, they, they trust you so that when you do offer something that's a little bit more of a direct call to um, start working with you, they're that much more likely to, you know, jump on that opportunity. Very good, very good. Um, and Holly, did you have any? any no, 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 I think she said it. Give, give, give before you offer, yeah. Got it, and then Carrie, what does consistency look like in video? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, it, it depends. We, like our brand videos, we encourage our clients to put those up on their website, the, on the homepage and just have that existing there that works along with where you're sending people to your website um, through marketing campaigns or you're getting inbound leads through your SEO, um, it's there. Um, you might also want to do a monthly social media something. For example, we have a client who brought us in to do a brand video, a culture video that he actually put up on Glassdoor in an effort to attract the right kind of employees for his firm. And then while we were there, we also had a list of topics ahead of time decided these are the 12 topics I want to do for social media. So now he has a whole year of monthly posts for social media. So they're kind of an evergreen, but that you can roll out in a consistent way. Excellent, excellent. I'm gonna answer some questions here. I mean, ask some questions for you all to answer. And I know as we're kind of winding into the kind of the home stretch here, um, I want to not only give you all the opportunity to tell us any stories that you want to tell us, but also to um, get any questions answered that people have. So attendees, uh, this is kind of an amazing opportunity or a wonderful opportunity um, to speak with uh, these, uh, to speak with our presenters and ask questions if you like. So just go ahead and let us know if you have questions. So one question we have is how do you, well, we did that. Um, how do you bridge the gap between personal email and uh, use of constant contact, which can be impersonal? So, um, does that make sense? I mean, did I say? Well, I think right? you always want to have. I, maybe I, I'll I'll take this, and you, if there needs to be more clarification, but I think it's always good to be personable in your emails, even if they're business related. So, what like Mailchimp and Constant Contact allow you to do is say, um, "Hi, Julie. You know, it's, uh, today I want to provide you with the blah blah blah, like whatever the email is." But using that personal touch, um, I think is number one, that that's always a, a good thing to do. And I think having whatever your tone is of your business, making sure that you're incorporating that tone in that email or in that communication. We always also tell people, don't be afraid to have some humor, to have some personality, to be friendly. You know, you don't always have to be like extremely business um, focused in terms of that language. Now, I will say that's a little bit different. If you do feel like that's your business tone, if that's your approach, you have to keep to your personality and your tone of your business. But I think overall, it's probably that 80-20 rule again is don't be afraid to be personable, humorous, um, approachable in your communication. Yeah, I, just an example with the attorney that we've been working with, um, they recently started a, a blog and their blog is is meant to be full of educational tips and it is, but one of the things that just really adds their personality in is they, they sort of have an intro to each article that gives a personal example of something. And it, it may not be, you know, a, a personal example to their, their lives with their kids, but it's still personal and it's that story again that we've talked about, just we all gravitate towards the narrative. So just having that kind of a personal touch in an email um, to kind of kick into what it's about can be really helpful too. Okay. Now, Carrie, how do I bring out the shy storyteller in me? Mm -hmm. I love that question. Um, I am a shy storyteller myself, for sure. So one of the things I really enjoy with people is just turning that nervous energy on camera into just the flow. So, I mean, it, one way to do that is to practice. And by that, I don't mean this like in front of a mirror or zoom like zoom is a very weird 
way to think about yourself on camera. It's very unnatural to look at yourself as you're talking with a weird, it feels weird. So don't think of being on camera as being on Zoom. Um, that's kind of one piece of self-consciousness to remove. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would say like practice with someone who can ask you good questions and who can reflect that back to you and help you see like a, just a friend, like come up with a list of questions help, or I can send out a little list of questions to help that just kind of gives you that practice of having someone reflect back to you, nodding even, or just saying, oh yeah, interesting, tell me more about that. Like, LaVon, the way you're asking questions is so helpful because you're interested, you're curious. And so having someone be on the other side of that rather than speaking into a void or looking at yourself, just having that human connection on the other side really helps where I know someone's listening to me. That's how I get drawn out. If I know someone's engaged, listening, paying attention, oh, okay, I'll, I'll tell you more. You're interested, okay. I think that's the main thing. So when you're working with someone, I guess you're bringing out, you're that interested party on their side that's kind of pulling out the person who wants to talk about other people but doesn't want to talk about themselves. Exactly. Yes. I, I love that role. <laughs> You're really good at it, too. <laughs> Thank you. Now, I see that there's some, have I missed any Q&As here that we should bring There's up? a couple of them. Um, here it says, what are some of the top reasons why your email marketing rate is okay. below the industry average? Yeah, I saw that one, too. Um, you know, it's there can be all sorts of reasons, but just to kind of give a general answer, um, open rates have everything to do with the subject line. So one of the greatest things you can do, and you can do it on some of the platforms we mentioned, MailChimp and Constant Contact, you can do A-B testing. So you can test two different subject lines to your audience or a portion of your audience to see which one gets the better open rate. And then you could take the winner and send it to the rest. And you can constantly do that. You can always be checking it out figure out what kind of a subject line. Um, we've done this before with clients and we called it the sort of mild and the spicy. Um, so, you know, you can, you can test different types till you understand what your audience gravitates to. Excellent, excellent. Any other questions that we haven't addressed? The other, the other one here is whether I'm on the first page of Google search Seems like a maddening process. We've heard this before. Um, when I'm doing blogs, videos, how concerned should I be about including certain key search words in my messages? Um, I'm also going to let Julie maybe take this one because she is better at SEO than I am. <laughs> SEO is a beast. It is its own area of expertise. Um, and neither Holly or I profess to be SEO experts. But what I do know is that SEO, and, and, and I'll speak of Google specifically, it's a cumulative uh, type of uh, exercise. So Google likes to reward uh, pages that are consistently posting new content, new content of different types. Um, while it is important to get those tags in and those keywords, it's not what it used to be. Um, it's not like if you do that, you're going to rise to page one. I, I think we've found that it's really, it's, a, it's the long game. It's not a fast game. And it's just being consistent about posting that content. I'll also give a tip. That's great advice. And I'll also give a tip. We started using the website Clutch recently. That is user reviews of your services. And it's been great. We actually had an inbound lead from that weirdly from someone who I had met at networking events too, but it wasn't connected. Um, but yeah, Clutch is really a great service and they verify the testimonials. So it's, it's actual people talking about you. So if you can encourage your clients, set yourself up on Clutch and encourage your clients to review you there, um, that's a great way to get some inbound leads. Now I'm told that, that also for search engine optimization, this is, now we've reached the extent of my knowledge about any of this. This is just the actual term. But I'm told that it loves video. Is that the case? That, uh, okay. It does, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Carrie. <laughs> yeah, and you can, I've seen some videos that you can tell are SEO optimized, that we, the brand videos we make really aren't focused on that. Um, but yeah, you can kind of see, like it's a similar 
correlation, and I don't know a ton about this, maybe Julia or Holly does, but it's a similar correlation to a blog that you can sort of tell is like stuff with keywords. You can have a video that's similar in that way too. That, that's a little bit what I was talking about. You want to be careful. And again, we are not SEO experts, but um, Google has sort of caught on to keyword stuffing and it doesn't doesn't really reward it as much anymore. So I'm saying it's being mindful and, and, and using relevant keywords that really do relate without stuffing them. Um, I think it's kind of a check the box, but it's not going to be this magic thing that gets you to pick one. Very good. Now, Ed, before I, I think we are at, we have about five more minutes. And before we sign off, I, I'm, I know I've changed the subject a little bit, but uh, I've been known to do that on occasion. <laughs> there is this guitar in the background in the <laughs> screen, and, and I just want to know the backstory. So, oh gosh, let's see. Okay, that <laughs> is um, well, there's a little bit of a backstory. I wish my husband was here to tell it to you because that's his guitar. He actually has two. I'll just show you the other one. There are two guitars. Well, I wish Julie had her guitars because she's got three of them that is also, also, but my husband does play guitar intermittently. Um, and he bought this guitar. There it is. Yeah. You can even watch. Now she's not breaking his song. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. So yeah, he plays, you know, every now and then, and then now it's just really accessible in the, in the wall. <laughs> just just wrap it right off the wall. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you know, and that's really cool. And and for purposes like, let's say I'm putting a story out, or or one of our attendees is, um, say, you're working on a website. Is it ever? Does it ever make sense to have put things like you talked about putting out like kind of a story, like you said, things are just kind of about your interests uh, that don't have to do with what you do, but this happen to be your interests. I, for instance, like science fiction. You know, I mean, is there a place for? things that are just so kind of completely unrelated to what you do. Yeah, a great example of that from a colleague who I've met who's, he uh, does mortgages and he's also a musician and he sends out a Friday musical moment and he, you know, kind of just puts in there, I, here's your, my contact info for mortgages. But I love that where it's something that everyone can relate to and enjoy. That's cool. And they kind of like what you were all saying about providing that part, the meat to the background and all of that, and kind of the, from the guitars to kind of the uh, artistic background to how you met and, and follow up. And so it's greatly appreciated. We are at, um, we have, we're winding down and I had previously, we had put your contact information. So I, you know, if there's anything that is not addressed here, any questions that weren't answered, or people just want to follow up, they have your information to follow up. Um, but before we sign off, I see that there are probably a few more questions here. And I was wondering if we, if there's any that we can address there and if there's any kind of final. One of them is like, what's the name yeah. brand of that? Is it a Martin or a Gibson Dove, the guitar? And yeah. I need to, Sure. If I'm going to have this in my background, I really need to shore up my knowledge. <laughs> I, think, I think I think Charlie's is a Gibson. I think it's a Gibson as well. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so and, um, one one thing that we wanted to offer, I know that Carrie offered her 15 minute call, and she has an exercise, um, and we just wanted to have an opportunity just to throw out an offer as well. We have a program that we've put together called Tips and Sips, and it's usually a one to three hour workshop. Um, but what we also do is have our introductory call where we say it's a tips and sips introductory call. So grab a little sip of something, whether that's water, coffee, or a glass of wine a little bit later in the day. And we'll have that conversation with you, give you some questions to answer, and then give you some tips in that, in that introductory call. So we're happy to offer, offer that to this team as well. Wonderful, thank you. Thank you all. Appreciate it. It's very much appreciated. Um, I've really enjoyed this conversation and uh, learned, uh, I've gotten to learn a bit of, about each of you more than I knew. And, and I greatly appreciate that. Um, and I think we have just a couple more minutes. Uh, any final stories um, before we go? And, uh, all right, then. Well, I can't thank you enough. This was really a lot of thank fun. You for I, us. Yeah, thank you, thank so, you much. so much.
Thank you. And to our, uh, to our attendees, thank you all as well. And uh, everyone have a great day, a great holiday weekend, and catch you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye.